Well, five years actually went by so fast. It's just been a crazy ride, but also went by super fast. It definitely makes you value time a little bit more because time really does fly. So much has changed in five years. All I can really think about is how much weight I've gained. <laughs> it's like a half a decade. Um, I just think of those sort of segments of time sort of progressing through. I'm Stephanie Dowd, and I was a cosplayer featured in Cyphantonians. Hi, I'm Professor Damon Paulbox, and I was the professor that was featured in Sci-Fi Conians. I'm Teresa Gonzalez, and I was featured in Sci-Fi Conians um, with all the crochet and knit hats. Hi, my name is Joey Devine, and I'm the founder of the San Antonio Wookie Walk. I was one of the subjects featured in Sci-Fi Conians. Hi, guys, I'm Mohana Cabrera, and I am the director and producer and host of Sci-Fi Conians. Sci-Fi Tonians is a story about the fandom community in San Antonio and about how these fans of comic books and superheroes and science fiction inspired Alamo City Comic Con. The movie was filmed in the fall of 2014 all the way through early June 2015 and it chronicles a year in the fandom community and how this convention has affected fandom and how fandom has affected this convention. I had ran into a really good friend of mine in, I think it was October 2013, late October 2013. And, you know, he was telling me about how him and his girlfriend had gone to Almost City Comic Con's first show and how they kept thinking of me and how, you know, wow, like, oh, Hunter, that's a story that you should totally tell. And it was not a story that I was interested in. The whole concept of a Comic Con uh, was not something that I really understood. At the time, I thought Comic Cons were basically um, fetish conventions because I had seen a documentary on MTV several years ago on My True Life um, about the furry conventions. And so I thought it was a convention about um, sex and all this other stuff. And so I was like, look, sex is great, but it's for the bedroom. <laughs> I'm not interested in exploring it on camera and uh, I found out later that um, it had nothing to do with sex. I'd seen Alejandro advertising the trailer for this uh, Sci-Fi Tonians and I reached out to him asking about whether or not it would be available because I was going to be teaching a class at, at the University of Texas at San Antonio on superheroes, um, the anthropology of superheroes. I uh, uh, got involved through that process. Alejandro had reached out uh, a couple times and I was pretty hesitant. Um, I was running the zombie walk and uh, Wookie Walk at the time. So, so luckily, uh, I was friends with Stephanie, who just so happened to know Alejandro and gave me the, the green light. I met Alejandro in 2009 and in college, and we were just in one random class. I think it was dance history, I don't know. And we just clicked, it was so much fun to hang out with him. All of a sudden, like, you know, our paths kinda, you know, fell apart. He started one thing, I started another. And then all of a sudden in a convention, I think uh, I was the Wookie Walk. I see him, like, I was in a booth, and then he's there, you know, with his cameras. I'm like, Alejandro? He's like, oh my god, we haven't seen each other in so long. <laughs> So um, he saw me cosplaying and then he said, you know, he would like to make some videos and stuff. I had no idea it was going to be Sci-Fi Antonians. I just thought it was going to be some project, you know, like small thing. And I never thought it would get like it got. He came and saw me at my first show that I ever did. It was the Alamo City toy show and I didn't know what I was doing. I had a little handmade sign that I, my sister and I had drawn it looked pretty then you know Alejandro came by and he he liked I have an R2D2 hat he liked the R2D2 hat and um, thought the name of my business was really unique and started talking to me about why I chose that name and um, it was it was a very very personable experience it was flattering because again, I didn't think anybody would be interested in that type of thing, and I was wrong. 
What I didn't know was that I was more a part of this community than what I thought. If you're like me, who my childhood was basically late 90s all the way through like the early 2000s, um, you know, you are part of this community. I remember being in pre-kindergarten and I remember after school uh, watching the Power Rangers and just being in love with it and obsessed with it and, you know, 1999 when Pokemon came out uh, during lunchtime in fourth grade just playing with Pokemon cards I remember I was obsessed with it so much that I even had the ash hat and would wear it everywhere I went if you're a kid who grew up in the late 90s early 2000s like I did um, it was almost going to this comic-con was almost like coming face to face with uh, my childhood and um, that's definitely a very rare um, opportunity I remember my first meeting with their CEO, Apple De La Fuente. One of the things that he asked me was, how long are you trying to make this documentary? And I said, well, usually when I do documentaries, I'll do, I'll usually, the, the length of time is usually 15 minutes. And he sort of looked up to the, to the ceiling and said, make it an hour and we'll put it in the movie theaters. I realized in that moment that he was not gonna take no for an answer. And I just sort of said, okay, yes, let's do it. Leaving the office and sort of being like, where the f in San Antonio am I gonna find an hour's worth of content? And also, who the hell's gonna watch this movie? And, um, and boy, was I wrong. Comic-Con, sci-fi, anime, and other conventions have become wildly popular and big business, but they didn't start out that way. Local producer, director Alejandro Cabrera, who also used to be an intern here at News 4, has produced a documentary about the local comic book subculture here in San Antonio. It's called Sci-Fi Tonians, and it premieres Monday at the Alamo Draft House. San Antonio is a city that makes history. And there's something very powerful about that. And the story is more than just comic books and superheroes. It's about what can happen if we as a community embrace new ideas and new concepts and, and the power of a community. And now more than ever, uh, it's important for us to come together. I remember the day of the premiere. It was August 31st, 2015. And seeing a big old sign that said, sorry, Sci-Fi Tonians sold out. And just seeing a line of people and immediately just rushing straight to the auditorium. I didn't want to say hi to anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to have any eye contact with everybody. My biggest fear was that people were going to see this and it was going to be a piece of <laughs> and, and basically they were going to come out after me with uh, knives and pitchforks demanding their money back. The premiere was absolutely amazing. I remember it. I remember being like a crowded theater, which we don't have right now. The fact that it was sold out absolutely blew my mind. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was something I never thought I'd be a part of. It's been a year in the making, and I'm surprised we were sold out today. Yeah. I was like, who wants to see this? <laughs> we, um, went, we were lucky. I was just like, I wonder if it's already sold out. And we looked at, it, I was like, all the seats are red. I checked this morning, and I thought it was, I, I thought Ashton Kutcher was gonna pop out of somewhere and say you're punked, but, but no, no, so. no, 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 not this time, it's, it's the real deal. They were completely sold out and we were crushed because we had come all this way and it was going to be a great project, which it ended up being, and um, we were like, we can't get in. And so they brought chairs in and just put chairs where there weren't no, where there were no chairs. and. We just ended up having a good time and got to go in and see the premiere and it was a it was a great experience. The main thing I was super nervous, there was so many people. Um, they were gonna pretty much see the whole thing and Alejandro worked so hard on it and I worked along with him. Um, we, everyone involved just put so much, so we were all very, at least for me, I was nervous, but the outcome was amazing. Everyone just loved it. I had been on a big screen before uh, and in other sort of uh, more art films in college uh, that friends did, but I hadn't uh, ever been 
film talking about you know the things that I do professionally now, and which is anthropology. And so, and then I remember being really critical of myself as I spoke, uh, thinking about how I was not. Uh, there were things I wanted to, I should have said, um, ideas that I could have expressed better. It's just sort of a typical academic kind of response to, to that kind of a context. I was so self-conscious because my biggest fear was like watching myself with an audience and my biggest concern was like are they watching me react to myself and I was like look I'm not Shia LaBeouf I'm not trying to do one of those things so I watched the movie from from the hallway because um, I didn't want anybody watching me. There's this amazing cut when I'm dressing up and all the sounds and like it looks like Batman you know and then I came out walking and I have all the outfit on everyone just clapped and I was it was amazing I was like oh my gosh oh my, I was freaking out but it was it was very excited definitely an experience I'll never forget. Uh, just listening to the crowd actually like whisper and talk about it uh, it was nothing but praise but the, the biggest thing uh, was her voice and just absolutely like how cute it was and with her accent and uh, yeah it was just it was just really cool to like hear people talk about like my friend like that and I just um, you know was, I just I don't know just the energy at that one point in time everyone was just like Yes, this rules, and uh, it felt really good. It was a lot of fun watching the movie in real time with an audience and watching people react the way that they did. Um, that was something that was very, very uh, exciting and, um, and almost a surreal moment. And it's definitely one of those uh, moments that will forever resonate with me for the rest of my life. first thing that people ask when they see the film, because I show it in my class on a regular basis, um, they want to know about how it came about and how the film sort of, you know, what was the focus of it, and they want to know about the people in the film as much as anything, and if I still am in touch with them, which I mostly am not. You know, we would talk about the, 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 the individuals and what they've been up to, and if they're still making cosplay, or if they're still uh, have a booth at the Comic-Con, and, you know, I would, I would sort of respond about those types of things. So when I was uh, the the the, um, the Comic Con later afterwards, I was wearing PT again, and everyone was like, they knew me, they saw me, and they were hugging me. They were asking me how I was, what was my name, if I had a page, if like it was so nice, and it, it touched me. Like, wow, these people really think you know that I'm part of the of their community and all that. So it was beautiful. It was just wonderful. The following week, we went to. Um, we went to our show, the third um, Elmo City Comic Con. It was shocking, actually, that there were people coming to our booth that were looking specifically for me and my products because of Sci-Fi Tonians. I had no idea the amount of response that would garner. All weekend long, people were coming around saying, I was looking for your booth. There was another person who had some crochet stuff, but it wasn't yours. I knew it wasn't yours because it wasn't what was in the show. So um, I actually, after that, I put up a little poster in my booth that said, as featured on Sci-Fi Tonians. I Man, I saw you on the screen or, yeah, it was really, really cool. Like, how did you, you know, get a part of that? And um, then, you know, um, they'll ask me about like the zombie walk or Wookiee walk. Uh, things that you know I run and I felt a little famous uh, to be honest you know uh, for a little bit which is really really cool. I think one of the first thing that people ask me about sci-fi Tonians is they, they talk to me about Stephanie Dowd and they talk to me about her cosplay and how amazing it was. Um, they ask me if, um, if I made any money <laughs> when you do this kind of work um, you you make some sort of money, but you know it's. I, you know I'm not Steven Spielberg. I'm not George Lucas. So you know <laughs> I still have to work very, very hard. Um, and then I think the one of the other questions that people will ask me is uh, about the Apollo sweater that I wear at the beginning of the movie, which is interesting because that's not the first question I, I thought usually would people ask. But I guess people pay attention. 
Um, and so um, that sweater was um, specifically made for me and it was made by Teresa Gonzalez from Bois. And I wanted to wear something that basically made a statement at the beginning that basically said, you know, get ready, buckle up, we're about to take off. The blue, the dark blue, and it had the Apollo rocket and it had the stars and the sweater that was commissioned was for an adult. And my sister is funny. She says, if you can think it, my sister can make it. And so that's, that's how it kind of came to be. He thought this, I would like this sweater that's for a little boy, but in an adult size. And then I just made it for him. And I thought it turned out great. And I think it looked great on him. I think the thing about Sci-Fi-Tonians that I really liked the most was the stories about um, the people, and particularly the ways in which people connected to the superheroes and the way that that, that particular culture um, inspires people and engages with people and gives them something, some sort of purpose and meaning, whether it's through cosplay or through uh, artistic creations or even just putting on the Comic-Con itself that the, is the focus of Sci-Fi Tonians. Uh, Apple's sort of commitment um, and passion for Batman, for example, comes through really strong. And, and I think that those types of things are um, have been, for me, really the more memorable parts. And it's the part that I really kind of focus on when I do teach a class. My favorite part of Sci-Fi Tonians is probably Stephanie's part. For my story, I don't think it was that touching. I don't know. It was more like, you know, more related in the, create, in the creating side of things. There was this politician, this was this teacher, this was this lady that works, you know, to and crafty to make things. Like, it was, it was so many. I just loved every single one. It's really hard for me to choose. I think my favorite part wasn't so much like, I liked this person, or I liked that person, or I thought this was really interesting. My favorite part was that most everybody featured was like me, that we didn't really think anybody would really be interested in what we had to say or what what we had to bring to the table. We were all just normal people that got together and shared a love of all things comics, all things Comic-Con. I guess I'll, I'll talk about one thing that didn't make the movie that I thought was that, that was amazing. I found out that I was going to be interviewing Linda Blair, who played Reagan in 1973's The Exorcist. I was just like super excited because The Exorcist is one of my favorite films of all time. It was an odd interview. Um, we start talking and she starts telling me about how The Walking Dead is going to become true because um, we don't care for our ecosystem and you know how that stuff is gonna happen and we're gonna have zombies which I think she was right because we're in COVID so <laughs> America you don't want this to happen so what is a TV show now is going to become reality sure. if we don't stop she doesn't wear leather because you know she's she doesn't believe in wearing leather and I look at myself and I'm in head-to-toe Burberry runway I get my shoes at Payless non leather it says man-made material. I get any of the clothes that I wear are not leather, they're not of animal product. Burberry is one of PETA's enemies. She did a PETA campaign. And so I'm like, oh shit. I hope she doesn't notice that I'm wearing suede, that I'm wearing cashmere, and that I'm, I hope she doesn't read Vogue <laughs> because I'm in a lot of trouble. The interview, was so odd that I remember trying to ease the tension and making a joke. The Exorcist taught me that people shouldn't piss on carpets. Well, people should piss on a carpet. And we are talking about The Exorcist, I assume. Correct, correct, correct. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think she laughed, but I, I think she sort of probably thought I was an asshole or something. Her handler sort of signaling to me off camera saying like like this, kind of like saying wrap it up, time to wrap it up. I was only supposed to get 10 minutes with her and I sort of 
politely say to her, well, thank you so much, Linda. It's been an amazing, uh, thank you so much for, for doing this interview. And she sort of stops me and says, well, um, actually, I wasn't finished. I'm going to stop you for a second because I didn't finish. Oh, sorry, it, sorry, sorry, sorry. It went from being from an environmentalist to, to the food issues and realizing and talking about that it was going to make the kids sick. Well, it has made the children sick and it's, made, it's brought on obesity, heart disease, and all these things are addressed in my book, Going Vegan. Her handler sort of goes like this, <laughs> walks out of the room, and I'm like, don't go! And she continues talking and the interview goes on for 20 minutes. And at that point, I just sort of checked out and. You know, I, didn't, I don't even remember what she was talking about, but um, it was the interview that, it, the interview did not make the, the, the final cut of the documentary, but um, it was still really cool. I mean, getting to come face to face with um, uh, Hollywood um, history. I mean, she is walking Hollywood history. She played Reagan in The Exorcist. She was nominated for an Oscar. You know, that was so cool. And um, it, it, it's still, even though it was one of the oddest and craziest interviews, it's still one of my favorite of all time. So in 2015, uh, when they released Sci-Fi I, I think that was the main year, at least for me, how I felt it. Because it was so crowded, everyone was just talking about it, it, it was just so much fun. <laughs> That's my answer to that question. <laughs> That's my answer to that question. <laughs> Comic-Con has, has changed a lot since uh, since sci-fi tonians and sadly it's not the same as it was there's been a lot of different sort of players coming into the fold well some of your favorite tv and film stars will be here in texas this weekend for the latest installment of celebrity fan fest the first event last november was a huge success attracting people to the alamo city by thousands those have not taken off in the same way um, as as alamo city was at that time it was sort of a golden moment i guess in some ways unfortunately i don't think Elmo City Comic Con has changed for the better. I guess it was a year and a half after Sci-Fi Tonians came out. The, the fight to be a vendor in the show ended up being very tight for where the show producers were very personable and I could say, oh, I know the producer of this show and I could go up and talk to him. Um, and know that he cared about the fact that I didn't have S hooks or that my table didn't come with a covering. Now it was, I was lucky if I got to talk to the assistant of the assistant of the assistant of the assistant. The last show I went to was the last show that they held at the Henry B. Gonzalez Center, which was in Memorial, Memorial Day of 2017. And I remember being so shocked because even preview night, which is usually the night that they use for the press and for vendors, was so dead. And I remember sort of being conflicted and, and it not really being able to, it didn't click for me, like, wait a minute, like, is it dead or is it, is it me or is it really dead? All the prior shows, there was excellent attendance. There was 70,000 plus, and this show, was not it. You couldn't talk to the show producer because they were never around. His assistant was never around. The crowds weren't there. The crowds were not only not there, there, it was, it was like a ghost hall some of the times. You could definitely tell where they had cut some corners. And the show really felt, their 2017 show really felt like it was a show that was just random and it was just randomly put together. And, um, you know, I mean, it, that was the year where, you know, two big films were going to come on. You had the Justice League, you had, um, which is coming out in November, you had the, the anticipated The Last Jedi, which now everybody hates, but back then nobody knew what to expect from that movie. And you know, at the Comic-Con, you, know, you had random guests like Nick Carter was to your corner, and here you had Christy Alley, and over there you had Val Kilmer, and then you had some random has-been, and it's like, it was almost like they were just throwing balls to the wall and see whatever, whatever 
see what what would happen. And um, it it was definitely a very very um, disappointing show because you could tell the heart was just not there. I lost so much money that show, and I just couldn't recoup from that. That was the last, and I I told. I emailed the producer and I said, I can't believe how different this show was run from all the previous shows. It was like night and day, two totally different shows. And basically I was told, well, you're not our big money maker anyway. I'm done. I will never give that person another dollar. Um, afterwards, they changed the venue. Many things happened, so I do feel like it has it, it has changed a lot, not in the greatest way. With the venue changes and and all the other stuff, I feel like a lot of the energy may have been lost. Um, but the heart, I feel like it's still there. You know, it's still there. Uh, they definitely got some things to work on. I know there's been a few um, articles and, and this, this, and that. Organizers of the San Antonio Comic Convention are apologizing for a costume some consider to be blackface. The photo drew criticism on social media. Now a contest host at the Alamo City Comic Con dressed up as a fictional character called Powerline from the Disney A Goofy Movie. I read that explosive article that came out last year about how they owed several thousands in the hundreds of dollars to the Henry B. Gonzalez Center. I mean, I've basically done the study of every Comic-Con that, that's happened in town since sci Tonians with my students, and so they go to the con, they collect the data, um, they report back on it, and I read their reports, and over time what I've seen consistently is less satisfaction. The Alamo Dome was just too big for, for it in some ways, and too small in other ways. Um, Students didn't enjoy it as much. They felt it wasn't it wasn't the same as when it was at the convention center. And I think that that's sort of a sad uh, aspect of it. When the show quit becoming about the culture, and I feel like it started becoming about the money. I haven't really had any conversations with their CEO since 2017, and because the current documentary that I'm doing is about Star Wars fandom in Texas. Um, Alamo City Comic Con hasn't participated in any shape or form, nor will they be featured in that documentary in any shape or form. So I don't know what's fact from what's fiction. I don't know what's the extent of truth. Um, and I, of course, it would be very rude of me to pick up the phone and say, hey, I heard you owe a lot of people money. <laughs> Let's talk about it. You know, that, that's not in my business. Um, um, but one thing that I can say is, when I think of Alamo City Comic Con, I don't think so much about the employees or the people behind the scenes or the uh, corporation. I think of the fans and I think of the community and I think of the people that that were responsible for the success of this convention because at the end of the day, it is because of that community, it is because of those fans that this convention was so successful. And um, unfortunately, from, from what I've heard, it seems that, that they have forgotten about that community. As an academic, I'm kind of removed from the community. I, I'm studying a lot of times. And so this was really a nice way to be able to engage with the community and to be able to be a part of that community in, in, in an interesting way. One thing I can take from this experience is just being able to express my love for uh, the fandom, uh, my love for the community. It was a reaff reaffirmation that we are a community of just normal people who care a little bit more. For one brief shining moment, there was this time in San Antonio, Texas, in the Alamo City, the only Alamo City in the entire world, where there was this celebration, there was this passion, there was this magic. To me, the documentary is, is merely a souvenir. The experience was so much more, and to be able to share with people with the documentary is, uh, is definitely something that is priceless. sci fi Antonians definitely changed change my life, but it changed me more than anything. Now I'm very confident that I can get things done.
Happy birthday, Sci-Fi Tonians! Happy five year anniversary! Happy five year anniversary, Sci-Fi Tonians! Feliz cumpleaños! Happy birthday, happy anniversary, Sci-Fi Tonians, you're amazing! It's been an amazing five years. Happy birthday, Sci-Fi Tonians, and happy birthday to all the viewers who have been so supportive, and thank you so much for everything.